Did you want to take care of anything before going back to Sindri's? No. First, we retrieve Mimir. Then you can tell us what you learned in Asgard. After that, we shall see. You really do think of him as a brother. What about Freya? Seems like she moved in while I was away. Once she turned her hatred back to Odin, she recognized our interests were aligned. Huh. I tried convincing her of that, but... When was that? Oh. Before I started telling you where I was that night. I see. Hey, she didn't kill me. I said nothing. Off cleaning up all the damage God did. Yeah. Try back soon, yeah? <laughs> Check. You're back. How did it go? The beast should travel us no further. Well, that's our bloody relief. So you put down old Garm, did you? Yeah. Sort of. Atreus, your decision to go to Asgard after all he's put us through. I'll never understand it. But I hope you at least came back with something we can use. I hope so, too. Come on, let me show you what Odin's up to. Here's what he cares about most. More than Ragnarok or anything is this mask. Anyone recognize it? That thing? Ugh, oh, it's a dead end. He's been faffing around with that since before I knew him. To be honest, I thought the giants were just having a laugh with that one. Okay, fine. No. You're wrong, Mimir. This mask is no fraud. The giants didn't make it and only a few of them ever glimpsed it in their visions. They never knew its origin, but some believed it was a way to gaze into the secrets of creation itself. Is it an oracle? Much, much more. Imagine becoming one with a source of infinite knowledge. This? This is why Odin tortured me. So what do you think? Know it? No. It's one obsession he never saw fit to share with me. But I'll tell you this. Even when Odin speaks the truth, his purpose is false. Either way, it's a mistake to let it distract us. Is Heimdall our focus or not? Write our fate another way. Then I'm going back to Vanaheim. If we're not taking the fight to Odin, I should help my brother stand against him. We will join her when we can. I'm gonna study my notes on the mask, see if I can think of a plan. But if you want to go anywhere, I'm with you. And listen, everyone, I'm really sorry about the way I left. You know I've never hurt any of you on purpose. Well, when you can turn into a bear by accident, I suppose these things can happen. So, do you forgive me? Of course, Atreus. We know you meant no harm, lad. Sindri? I'm sure I will. Eventually. Okay. Guess I'll take it. While we're clearing the air, I hope that I can be forgiven for not doing more when the Hellwalkers attacked. Whatever reservations I have about violence, they shouldn't apply when your home is under attack. And certainly not by undead abominations. Yet I reached for a shield instead of a sword. You are right to chide me for that, old friend. The next time the moment calls me, 
I'll be ready. Well said, Tiara. I believe you just might. I can sharpen that axe if you want. <laughs> Living whetstone. That's me. You are well. Take more than a port full of bone John stiffs to keep me down. What am I gonna do? Walk around with a bandage on my head, begging for attention? I was mauled by a bear! Nudged more like it. I'm just gonna keep working on this till you're ready to head out. Hey, wait. We're with you. You're here. Something rather important to discuss. The Hound of Hell is no longer a threat. Indeed. You have proven worthy of great responsibility, Master Kratos. Please forgive me if I've been abrupt or at all impertinent of late. The loss of Madame Neathog weighed heavily upon me, even before the grave uncertainties of this Garm episode. I do sincerely apologize for my rude demeanor during this time. I did not notice. You are being polite, of course. My demeanor was impudent, borderline cruel. Surely this was a source of some discomfort for you. No. My conversational wounds run deep then, and you would hide the scars. I swear, Master Kratos, I will make it up to you someday. Should I have anything else for you, you'll be the first to know. We don't talk to you. Bugger off. do you know of the mask? Only that it was the great passion of Odin's life. He journeyed across Agia's burning ocean into the heart of the silent matron herself to find it. Lost every man in his crew, but to hear him tell it, it was worth all that blood and more. inventory since we last spoke. At your service. <laughs> now that I've spent time in Asgard, it's strange to imagine Magni and Modi there. Sif raised them both, right? She seems like a good mom. Maybe a little overprotective. A good mother? Not the Sif I knew. In a culture as debaucherous as the Aesir, being a paragon of womanhood meant being a fierce fighter and a fiercer drinker. She and Thor seldom knew a moment's <laughs> sobriety, whether brutally dealing with their enemies or, just as brutally, raising those boys. What do you mean? Oh, little brother. I know you didn't have an easy childhood, but you can't fathom how much worse it can get. Old. Let us search this area. Did the lighthouse put this lock here? Why would they care what happens in the barrens? When we were in Vanaheim, Big Bear and Bela spoke of this place. They said it was forbidden. Went on about uncovering some secret history. Secret history? Sounds like your kind of adventure. Aye, that's what I said. Another storm awaits. Yeah, but at least now we know how to end it.
go. Once we free both hop goofas and end all the storms, then what? Healing this land will take more than a pair of singing half goofa. The scars of conflict are woven into the very fabric of the realm. I have to believe in the long run we're doing right by Alfheim, but, well, what's your father always saying in this situation? Keep your expectations low, and you'll never be disappointed. Wise words. for a way underground. We gotta find the right cave. on one of my horns. Let's see if I can pull it off. No. <laughs> Whoa, the mirror. Look at all these books. An archive of knowledge. Don't see any light elves around. For now. Maybe they've left for the day. And we can browse at our leisure. So, these are the Valiant Schematics, eh? You know of him. Aye. One of the most gifted dwarven smiths around. Until he developed a conscience, anyhow. Here. Texts alone are not enough to end the Elven War, but restricting their access only serves those who wish to prolong it. Why would anyone do that? Many prefer violence than to be challenged by the truth. Vigvir spoke of an exile of the same name. Odds are he'd like a gander at that particular text. Here's the librarian would like a word. Lata Framborg. Sounds like she wants that journal back. No. Field strike! Run! 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 
Hiding all this knowledge away. Our ally wishes to read this journal. We are taking the book. were dire for his people. We will not make the same mistake twice.
wasn't sure before, but I'm glad we're doing this. The sandstorm just feels wrong for Alpha. Aye. Hearing the song of the sands again is a rare privilege, even if it's only a solo act. Now once we free this other half, Goofa, it'll be a duet. What is this place? It doesn't look like a dark elf cave. An abandoned ancient settlement, by the looks of it. Built long before the light wells creation. More hive matter as well. I'd say we're on the right track then. <laughs> out from down here. The mirror. The last time we were in Alphine. Was all over the realm. It looked unnatural. Like it was choking the life out of everything. Even the light itself. It looked that way because you're not from this realm, lad. To the Dark Elves, the hive is more natural than that faultless, lily-white column in the center of the well. Just look at how old some of these surfaces are. Far older than the light well, or even our trapped half for that matter. You have a point. I'd like to believe I always do.
Nicely done. Changes hands often in Nalfheim. Or so it appears. Big Vier did mention that these ruins have historical significance for the Light Elves. I assume they're only here to keep intruders out. Oops. <clears throat> I suspect the corpse below would disagree. Good eye. Let's continue, shall we? Two 
Haku for free. Are they gonna be able to make more? Almost certainly. A bittersweet spectacle, considering the cost. The cost. Aye. The adults' light fades as they pass it on to their offspring. Hold on. Are you saying they have to die to have kids? They don't have to, but the more light they give, the higher the chance of their offspring's survival. Damn. That's... Wow. It is what parents do. Really? All parents are supposed to die for their children? It is what I would do. Here it is. Guess it's time to free it. You don't seem particularly happy about it, lad. We're freeing them only for them to die. It doesn't seem fair. Life seldom is. But their sacrifice will allow their children to thrive. So they will die contented. I hadn't thought about it like that. I just, if I were one of the children, I wouldn't want them to. Son, but it is the only choice they can make. to the surface then.
You burn leaves and breathe the smoke. Oh, can I use it? No! no. was a blacksmith whose king commanded him to construct a box that could contain all the evils of the world. But no metal could hold such a power. So the blacksmith used the flame Mother, of... Mother, please. Okay. What is okay? You don't have to... Look, I know I get sad about this kind of stuff, but it doesn't mean I won't be okay, you know? Yes. So, what happened with the blacksmith? His daughter was the key to unlocking the box. He died, trying to protect her from those who would open it. You're not gonna have to do that for me. I know. But I would. Years we've overstayed our welcome in our fight. <laughs> Cut it free.
Come on this, Atreus. I will always do what is best for your future. Even these two understand that there is little choice for a parent. So... are they...? Um... Uh, this one's all yours, brother. You know what? Never mind. Father, we're doing all this. I know it doesn't solve everything, but it feels like we help. No rush to leave yet, is there? Who knows what kind of adventures await us in a freshly lit barrens? It is. Wow. Big statue. That's odd. The runes are dark. Why would the elves build a giant statue of Freyr? Didn't they just go back to fighting each other after he left? Difficult to say without an inscription. But it looks like the elves built this place together. Light and dark. Which means this would have been their first act of cooperation in generations. A far cry from lasting peace. But perhaps it served as a monument, one that symbolizes the potential for peace. Freya's absence, but a truce clearly did not. Monuments are useless to those who ignore their message. Didn't he have just, I don't know, cast a spell or something? Maybe things better permanently? There wasn't a spell or enchantment to leave behind. Freya's presence is what mattered. His very godhood is what brought life back to this dying land. Eventually, he had to choose. Vanaheim or Albert. Sound like a tough choice. Vanaheim was his home. It's never easy to walk away from those who need you. inside these crystals. You're right. Normally we'd have to provide our own. Perhaps slotting a crystal on the opposite side could shed some light on this mystery. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Monuments are useless. Why are you trying to fix this one? It was hidden for some time. Perhaps now it can serve as a reminder. Aye. Nothing reminds people of their history like chiseled, well-lit marble.
Crystal shard is glowing now. Looks like we can read the inscription now as well. In honor of the enlightened one, may his gift of light shine eternal. Ah. The light from the crystals. It is in the sand now. Would you look at that? Freer's gift endures after all. Or should I say, his presence? You are not funny. There will ever be peace now, Alpha? Peace is difficult after centuries of conflict. It must be found in its own time, from within. It cannot be forced. But Mom helped you find peace, right? How are the elves supposed to change if no one shows them the way? Your mother. She trusted me. Gave me the space to find my own way. But you are right, Atreus. She was my guide. Our actions in Alfheim may not bring peace, but by ending the storm and bringing light back to this land, perhaps we have planted the seeds. Couldn't have said it better myself. Sounds like I'm rubbing off on you, brother. It is possible.
Getting better, faster. I'd even be better than you one day, huh? If you are not, I have failed. Oh. Explaining how bad it got for Magni and Modi being raised by Thor and Sif while they were drinking. I want to understand. Well, set that aside for now. Come. Another key, eh? Sooner or later, we're gonna have to find a lock to put them in.
written poetry of your own brother? No. Well, ask a stupid question. mask. How did he hear about it in the first place? He said a voice spoke to him one night, entreated him to collect the mask and control his own fate. I still think he's all a bunch of bollocks. Odin got drunk, convinced himself a wooden mask would solve all his problems, and pranced about the realms until he found a sufficiently mysterious bobble to fit the bill. Mask probably doesn't do anything at all. Yeah, probably. Thank you, 
like Freya's carved into it. Maybe it's for good luck, or for use in prayer. Father?
Mine, imprisoning a drake. Can't decide whether to be impressed or horrified. Either way, it is over now. Bring these two animals back to Vanaheim, or Midgard even. Becky and Spana could use the company. We have kennels. I don't know. They feel pretty happy here. How fun is their home? I suppose you're right. It just seems lonely out here. It is peaceful. They have each other. It is enough. Explaining how bad it got for Magni and Modi being raised by Thor and Sif while they were drinking. I want to understand. Well, imagine learning discipline by having thrashed into you time and again. That was Thor's approach, the same one Odin used on him. A poisonous notion of manhood passed down through generations. A grim inheritance, leaving all of them the poorer. No more for now. Focus. Mm. This mentions a spell that puts trolls to sleep, and a magic relic that acts as a sort of counter spell. Hey, a flower. A dawn bloom, maybe. Back to what you were saying about Magni and Modi's childhood? Or beat them up a lot? Aye. He was always a cauldron of drunken rage, and Sif wasn't much better. Oh. What is that? Another Berserker gravestone.
Wasting my breath over. His berserker champions even less so. Trash. It's a lot of them. Why wait until now to speak of them? Before there was nothing to be done. But finding that help changed things. Spartan training like? Unforgiving. Is that why you didn't train me like one? Did you not think I could handle it? I did not think you should have had to. Thanks. Namir. Can we get back to what you were saying about Magni and Modi's childhood? Or beat them up a lot? Aye. He was... Always a cold, <laughs> drunken rage, and Sif wasn't much better. Well, Sif doesn't drink anymore. Neither of them do. I'm quietly flabbergasted to hear it. I get the sense it's more recent for him, but I know he loves his daughter. I expect that's the explanation. Sif goes straight in hopes that raising a good daughter will redeem their past failures. Thor struggles. Maybe she gives him an ultimatum after some breaking point or other. Like what he did to Modi, that night he found us. Oh, that's a deft guess, lad. And if that ultimatum worked, well, good for them, truly.
lad, am I right in getting the sense you've actually gotten to know Thor's daughter somewhat? Yeah, it was great. She wants to be a Valkyrie one day. And she deserves to be. Of course, I told her all about the Valkyries we faced, but I'm not sure how much she believes me. It didn't go great when I tried to tell her stories about her grandfather, though. Anyone can have a blind spot when it comes to family. Some only learn the truth in the hardest way. Brother, about the oracles of your lands. Would you say they manipulated events? Did they have an agenda? I do not doubt they held their own interests first. But in my experience, they could be easily fooled by their own prophecies. Could that be a specific experience, brother? Hmm. Once, I sought the Oracle for a means to break my bondage to Ares. One priestess had visions that showed her Olympus would be brought to ruin by the god of war. Therefore, she helped me, intending to undermine Ares and protect her realm. She did not foresee that I would kill him and take his office. In the end, I proved her vision of doom correct. So the Oracle herself brought about the very future she hoped to avoid. I suppose we're in fine company at that. Something I'm not sure I quite understand. In the Ragnarok prophecy Odin knows, all the realms get destroyed, including Asgard. In the version Groa kept secret, Asgard still falls. Wouldn't Odin have tried to prevent it either way? What difference did her lie really make? Brother, wait. Do you notice that? The Hiltcrave's battle that grave will provide. Considering your question about whether Groa's deception made a difference, I think of it this way. When it comes to subverting prophecy, knowledge is power. Without the real picture and context, the finer details can lead you to tragically incorrect interpretations. Back in my homeland, I was privy to the operations of a certain coven of heath witches who were keen on destabilizing the government. Enough talk for now. Be ready. I can play beautifully, you know. I do not. I would prefer it remain that way. That's all no! three of tributes I'd wager. Could fetch a hefty sum with our dwarven no! cocky. Yell at me if you want. Believe it. What would that accomplish? I make you feel better. No. You didn't trust me enough to talk to your worries. That's a wound not easily mended. I'm sorry. 
I need to be. Fault is mine. You collected Kavasir's stories? Give him here! Huge fan! <clears throat> Appreciate it. Hey, Sindri. So, how was Asgard? I had a fight with Heimdall in a huge field of mud. It got everywhere. No wonder you got out of there. I brought some back if you want to see it. Get away from me, you reprobate! <laughs> 